Hi, my name is Chris Lyons. I'm delighted to be here speaking to you about the Roy State's Black History Collection at McGill University. I'm the head librarian of Rare Books and Special Collections at McGill University. As you may know, McGill University is on the traditional lands of the Ganagahaga or the Mohawks, and I would like to thank them for sharing the land with us. I'm going to start my presentation by giving you a little bit of my own personal history. When I was a Bachelor of Education student in the early 1990s, I was involved in a very interesting project called Some Missing Pages. The purpose was to put together a collection of primary source documents that could be used in the Quebec history curriculum. And to collect this material, we went to a number of different um, libraries and archives and repositories, one of them being Miguel. And specifically, we came to consult the Roy State's uh, collection. You know, fast forward 25 years and here I am as the uh, head librarian. So one never knows where one ends up in life. And it's a very exciting change. Um, so the interesting thing is we consulted this collection because it was one of the biggest ones we knew that was available. And to give you a bit of context, there are over a thousand items in the collection. Most of this is published material, either monographs or books or uh, serials, periodicals of various sorts, um, brochures and other great literature. Most of it was published in the 1960s and 70s, uh, almost all of it's in English. And it deals, most of it being published in Canada or the United States deals with issues of uh, African uh, decolonization, uh, the civil rights movement, and the history of the Blacks in Canada. And it's not just historical collection, it was contemporary information. And to understand this, and I think to give credit to the collection's creator, I want to tell you a bit about Roy States. Um, he's, an, I find in some ways, a very interesting, exceptional individual. Um, not uncommon, though, for people who... Uh, are spokespeople for underrepresented communities. So let me introduce you to Mr. States, born in 1919 in New Glasgow, Nova Scotia, uh, part of the uh, traditional black community who were descendants of the loyalists who came to Canada in the 1770s uh, as a result of the American Revolution. His family were slaves who were freed when they came to Canada. Um, he grew up in New Glasgow and had to leave school at age 14, but was a voracious reader and a very curious person. And he describes how when um, he left school, he would still go and read all the time at the New Glasgow Public Library. And he describes a bit of an epiph epiphany he had when in 1935, at the age of 16, he ended up reading something. I don't know if this was at the library or not, something written by Marcus Garvey. And Marcus Garvey was a Black nationalist. He was Jamaican American, and he promoted the idea of racial pride or Black pride. And Roy read an article by him and said he suddenly realized this is a direct quote from an article of an interview with him subsequently. He suddenly realized, I didn't know anything about myself, my people, my own race. I began to look for information. I couldn't find any. The New Glasgow Library had 86,000 books. Only two were about Negroes. I began to look around to ask questions I wanted to know. It became my hobby. So this is what becomes a lifelong passion and interest of his. To continue with his biography, in 1939, he volunteered to fight in the Second World War only to be told at the recruiting office, despite the fact that he was relatively young and healthy, that he wasn't uh, able to sign up because, in another direct quote from him, it was a white man's army and this was a white man's war. The following year, despite that, he tried again, and this time was successful in enlisting and became a bugler in the Pictou Highlanders, so a local 
uh, Highland Regiment. He served in the military until 1947, served overseas, became a sergeant. And those of us who were in the military at some point know just how fearsome sergeants can be. And he's, well, he was a very big man, so I imagine he made a very intimidating sergeant. Despite that, he describes how he, when he returned to New Glasgow in 1947, and again, another direct quote, a curious thing happened. Before leaving, I was refused entrance into the theater there. When I came back in 1947, in uniform, with all my ribbons, I was refused again. So this, I think, is indicative of Roy's development, first as a person who's very curious about the background and the history of Blacks, and as someone who becomes a champion against discrimination and combating racism and community development. In the late 1940s, he fought with a number of other people to get the town of New Glasgow to extend the supply of fresh water to, I'm assuming, the, the predominantly black uh, part of the town. And he was said it was a long fight, but he was successful. 1952, he moved to Montreal to become a porter with um, CN, which was not uncommon for uh, African Canadians to work in the railways. And then in 1954, the age of 35, he rejoins the army and he remains there for until 1969 when at age 50, he retires. Now, interesting here is that with the army, he travels a great deal and he goes to different libraries and he sees different things and he's learning things. And he's stationed subsequently in Montreal in the 50s and 60s. He be, continues to be involved with community organizations as he was in New Glasgow, but he also keeps learning. He keeps curious. He actually finishes high school um, as an adult learner in the 1960s. And he also meets Martin Luther King and he describes actually spending four hours talking to Malcolm X at a mosque in Boston. So the significant period in terms of the collection, and I think in terms of Roy's, the fruition of this combination of interests and um, desire for social justice um, is in this period after. He retires from the army in 69, as I said. He has some eye issues, so he's a bit on quiet. 1973 to 1980, he works at McGill uh, as the supervisor of special events and activities. But this is also where he becomes very active in a number of ways to promote his, uh, his fascination, his beliefs. He becomes a public historian. So he writes columns for a couple of the local uh, black newspapers, community newspapers. He gives talks and he said he, he would give talks almost any time he ever got invited. Here's an example of a talk given on a contemporary uh, racial issues at the St. James United Church, which is a, the largest of the United Churches in downtown Montreal. So it's a, you know, a, most likely a heterogeneous um, audience that he was speaking to. Um, and he said the big thing for him in going out and talking to people and promoting awareness of the Black situation in Canada and Black Canadian history was a way of promoting racial harmony. So the figure figured if people knew more about Blacks, Blacks knew more about themselves, it would encourage greater self-awareness. But then if other people knew more about them, it would be a way of accepting them more. Um, so he would give a number of them. He also created a traveling exhibition, his twin passions, of course, history, and then being in the military, military history, he created a mobile exhibition, uh, as you can see on the black experience in Canadian military history. We have the placards from it. So this is the introductory one. And that's it, to give you an example of, of some of the content. It's biographical. So this is related to a person who joined the RCAF during the Second World War. I found this one particularly interesting. So Roy allows himself to um, do a bit of uh, editorializing in this one. It's a war memorial in New Glasgow, of course, his hometown. And he describes how when it was unveiled, the fact that it was surmounted by a Highlander bag playing the bagpipes made him and a number of other people 
veterans feel rejected. So his response to say was suggestions were made to topple the piper, denoting the lack of recognition of other veterans. I found that particularly interesting because he put this together, I suspect in the early seventies. And you know, even then there's this challenge to the idea of monuments as being um, exclusionary. So I thought that was quite interesting. Example of Roy as a, again, as a public historian and speaker being interviewed, which he often was in the um, local press. So the Montreal Star was a daily, uh, was probably the most uh, read of the Montreal English dailies at the time. He again is involved in a number of community organizations as well and gets a recognition um, just before he dies from the National Black Coalition of Canada which is um, something he was involved with in the executive for a number of years. Uh, I apologize for my hands, which I couldn't quite figure out how to get a picture without getting that reflection in it. It was a the numerous, numerous, you should see what was left on the uh, editing floor. But anyway, that's the best I can do. It was nice that um, Roy got that recognition for his involvement just before he died in 1980. So, he died in 1980, and then the, um, his collection was donated to McGill by his widow. And it's interesting, as I said before, it was a collection of, so of over 1,000 items, let me see, almost 1,200, came in 26 boxes. And as I said, it was mostly printed material of one sort or another, as you can see the list there, mostly books, magazines, newspapers, scrapbooks, clipping, and the exhibition material, which I described. To give you a sense of it, there are two major subdivisions of the set, cataloged and uncatalogued. The catalog material is mostly the books and related brochures and things like that, more substantial things that were considered um, significant to, um, to catalog. But if you look at the, the, the divisions of it, it's similar to the uncatalogued material, which I'll describe in a moment, as you can see, uh, the classification scheme is material in U.S. history, African history for the most part, for the Ds. The Fs are U.S. local history and Canadian history, language and literature. So this is where people like um, James Baldwin come in, social sciences as well. Uh, so, but the historical designation could be misleading because it's also contemporary events and information which is significant given the times he was making this collection. You can see the dates of the publications. This is not, he was not collecting as a historian or an antiquarian. So he wasn't collecting pamphlets from the 19th century on anti-slavery. He was collecting the material that was accessible, but also dealing with either history written at the time or contemporary issues. So as you can see, starting in the 50s, you start to get large collections, which again, given what was going on at the time, as noted there, is important. Biggest block is the 1960s and then the 1970s. Now for the non-catalog information, the 70s are actually predominating, at least from what I can tell. So you can see a bit of the spread. It was also um, that he was collecting material. Some of it was published in Canada, most of it was published in the US. That's again, that's the published information we're talking about, much more Canadian content in the uncatalog. Uh, and then mostly in English, because he read English. I don't know if he read French, but that gives you a sense of, it's, it had to be an accessible collection. Now, I wanna make this point. You think of when he's collecting and why thank God he was collecting at this time, because if you think of the 60s and 70s in terms of um, black political issues in particular, this week is exceedingly important period. It's the whole period of the African decolonization independence movements. It's the blossoming of the civil rights movement in the United States and Canada and other places. And in the Canadian context in particular, it's when we get large immigration from the Caribbean because of the removal of the racial dis uh, barriers in immigration law in Canada, which I believe was 1967. So you have a growing community of Blacks being joining the traditional uh, Black Canadian community. So in terms of rarity, 
it's a good collection. Again, we're talking about the collected material in that you have material that in the same edition, meaning the same is unique to Canada or unique to Quebec, fairly significant given the numbers we're looking at. And it, even if you're comparing other editions of the same works, it's still a significant collection. And just to give you a look at some of the shelves, you can see here issues related to African uh, independence movements, uh, Idi Amin in Uganda, uh, some material on Kwame Nkrumah, again, material related to US uh, history, including Roots, which was a really popular novel published in 1976 and then became a blockbuster of a miniseries in 1977, was the most watched uh, series in US television history at the time. So in addition to that, as I said, is the unpublished collection. Now this is the critical stuff. This is the material that was um, a lot of the ephemeral or gray material. Now you see that there are two classifications, Canadian, non-Canadian. The, these classification schemes are, are problematic. So I'll just say overall, this is a wonderful collection of material um, that is really the rare material. It's usually not held anywhere else from what I can tell or not held anywhere in Canada. Give you a flavor of it and some of the complexity. This is an article uh, publication related to Angola, the South Southern African Portuguese colony. So that's interesting in itself, published in 1970. What's intriguing is this is actually printed and distributed in Richmond, BC. So that opens all kinds of questions about what was going on and who was doing this and for whom. To give you a flavor of it, some of the community newspapers, now they're not complete runs, they're, they're collected numbers. It's a Montreal publication, again, from the 70s, a Toronto uh, community newspaper and a Halifax community newspaper as well. And as you can see from that, that was actually something Roy subscribed to. So in addition to this, you get more radical. And I put radical in quotation marks because ra one person's truth is another person's radical politics. So I'll leave it at that. But obscure, yes. Here's the Black Liberation Action Committee in Montreal. Here's a mimeograph. Remember mimeographs? Um, those of us of a certain age do. Um, the Black Action Party um, put out this publication about issues from a leftist perspective in Montreal. And then here's another Montreal pu group publication about uh, the is issues related to Africa. So in addition to that, you also get um, in this collection community type initiatives and information. This is put out by the Quebec Board of Black Educators, what you should know about your children and their schools. What's fascinating about this is it's addressed to Caribbean parents who are trying to navigate the school system for their kids. So to help them to understand how the Quebec school system works, how it's different from the Caribbean. And so helping them to adapt, wonderful example of, uh, of uh, navigating a, a new society. Here for the non-Canadian material we have, okay, I just find this so cool. Examples like this, the Black Panther newspaper. And as you can see, uh, one of their more uh, vibrant covers. Uh, another much more obscure um, uh, publication out of New Orleans. And then things like this. Oh, and I have to say, don't be worried. That's an effigy being hung. So this is a progressive Labor Party pamphlet uh, dealing with a strike of sanitation workers in Baltimore. So that gives you a sense of just a tiny taste of the diversity of this collection. This is the uncatalogued material. This is the stuff we really, I think we need to prioritize getting cataloged, but at least now you know something about this wonderful collection that Roy States put together um, as a way of educating himself so that he in turn could carry the banner of civil rights and understanding to the people around him. I thank you for your time and invite you to contact me and emailing me if you have any more questions. Goodbye.